Hey guys, it's Von Schpanger here. Um, I've got a bit of an update. Um, a friend of mine uh, back home in Canada, he's, uh, he's recently uh, become very, very interested in painting uh, Test of Honor miniatures. So um, uh, I've decided that I'm going to do this little bit of an update showing him uh, how to do uh, Oriental Flesh um, primarily. Um, but I'm also going to show everyone else uh, my uh, World War II Chinese that I'm working on as well as some Russians. So uh, let's check it out. So these are the figures that I'll be painting. Um, they're from the Mark Copplestone uh, range. Um, they both are from the High Adventure or the Back of Beyond range. Um, they're pretty good figures. Um, I've never mail ordered them, but uh, basically I've bought them at shops or at a convention. In fact, I inherited some, and you'll see some at the end too. But uh, yeah, let's get started, and I'll show you how I do the flesh tones on these guys, or how I get started. Okay, um, here they are with the base coat, um, which is basically a... Um, about a 50-50 or 66-33 um, blend of Shading Flesh by uh, Americana and Honey Brown. Uh, and I've covered basically the faces and the hands. And I've gone in and I've done the blacks of their eyes and maybe the lips, um, the space in between their lips or if their mouth was open. Um, next up, I'm going to show you the highlight here, uh, the first highlight. Okay, here are the basic highlights, uh, just the first stage of highlights uh, on this one guy. Uh, I've done the, as you can see, I've done the cheeks, done the nose, a little bit above the uh, lip the upper lip, a little bit on the chin and the, the sides of the cheeks, as well as, as the knuckles and the fingers on this guy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you don't have to cover everything, but just enough to give it a little bit of contrast. Um, let's take a look at the next highlight here. Okay, so here are all the four, um, and I've gone in and done another highlight. After the first highlight, I gave it a little wash, a sort of a really, really milky, less than milky wash of uh, watered-down milky wash of the honey brown. Uh, and then I've gone back over it, and um, the highlight here was a uh, like a buttermilk added to the original uh, base color of the shaded flesh and the honey brown. Um, and I've gone back over the knuckles and, the, and just picked out a little bit of the highlights just to give it a little bit more contrast. I've also darkened up the, the lips, and you can see about the eyes as well. And I'll show you how the, the faces and everything turned out here real quick. Um, but yeah, that's the second level of highlight. Um, so here's the, the finished flush. Um, so what I've gone, like I said before, I've gone and did the second highlight, a little bit lighter on the cheeks, the tip of the nose, the upper lip, the chin, and things like that, just to make it little pop a little bit more and show some more contrast. With the eyes, I started with a black line where the eyes were, and then with a very, very fine brush, within that little black line, I put two white dots on either extreme of that black line. Um, the bottom lip I've done in a, in a magenta, sort of a lavender color purple. And the next shot here, um, you'll see uh, the colors that I use to do the flesh. Um, so here are the colors that I use to do their flesh. Um, all of these colors are available at Michael's, which is a shop in Canada. Um, you know, we have the shading flesh and the honey brown, which were the base coat, the honey brown for the wash, and the highlight flesh and the light buttermilk were uh, used for the highlighting. The black and the purple, uh, the black is used for the contrast of the eyes, and the purple, of course, was used for the bottom lip. Um, you don't have to do the eyes or the lips if you don't want to. Um, it's a matter of taste. Uh, if you skip that step, I mean, with the scale of the figures and everything, uh, they'll look just as well. Uh, pardon me, just as good without it. Um, but it also depends on how steady your hand is. Anyway, those are the colors I used. They're about a buck eighty-nine a piece. I hope they help you out. Next up here, let's take a look at the uniforms. Okay, the uniforms and the, the guns, the rifles were all done in a dark chocolate brown. Uh, you can see a couple of the bases. I did it as well, but just that's the base coat for the colors there. Uh, here's the first level of highlights, which was just basically the honey brown right on top of uh, the uh, dark chocolate color. Um, and uh, just leaving the creases and the dark folds of the uniform as they were. Okay, here I've mixed the honey brown with that light buttermilk color, a creamy color. Stay away from white when you're doing any kind of highlights. Um, cream is way better. Um, but here we go with these guys. I just went over and picked over a little bits and pieces where the highlights of the light would really pick it out. Um, and uh, then I, what I did is I gave them a wash again of the honey brown, uh, similar to the one that I gave them uh, with uh, their flesh, except this one was a little bit thicker. This had more of a consistency of uh, thicker milk as opposed to a skim milk, uh, as it were. Um, after that, we did another series of highlights. So after that wash is 
100% dry, you can go back in and uh, give another highlight with the, the last highlight you did and just picking out the real, real sort of edges of things to give it a little bit more depth. So if you look at like their caps or if the folds of like their jackets and things like that, it gives it a little bit more depth and a little bit more contrast, which, which will look really, really nice from, you know, three feet away if they're on a table or if they're on your shelf or something like that. So the uniforms are done and now we're going to get into their equipment and things like that. Okay, I've, what I've done is I've gone in and I've done the fur on their caps, um, some ammo pouches that they might have had, any kind of webbing they had, um, and I've done uh, the rifles that they have in sort of a really sort of maroon, browny red, sort of it was like a deep mahogany, um, and that's just the base color. So I did all the base colors in one shot, um, and here are the colors that I used. So these are the colors I used to base coat uh, their equipment and webbing. Um, and uh, for the green, I might have, the olive color, I might have mixed the avocado with the brown here. Um, and then to highlight these colors, um, I used, of course, as you'll see here, the light buttermilk, which is great. I highlighted the black with the true blue um, and the honey brown, of course, I think I used to, to highlight uh, the um, avocado-y uh, olive drab that I had mixed up on, the, on some of the webbing and things like that. Um, and here, this is what they look like when they were all finished. So this is what they look like done uh, without being based. Um, I've got two guys uh, here turned around so you can see their back. Um, um, yeah, I just went through, picked out some highlights like the little buckles on that guy's bag and the, and the front on the left. Um, and then, yeah, just cleaned up some things. Remember, I'd used the blue with the black on the shoes, and uh, they were pretty much finished. Okay, so here's the four of them. They're all finished up. Um, these are the last four for the uh, free man unit that I'm doing for my Nationalist Army. I'll show you the, other, the other ten guys here in a second. Um, I went pretty simplistic with the bases. I probably mentioned it when I was showing you the photos. I just put one tuft down um, and just some basic rocks and things like that. I, I really don't know what the Mongolian scrub looks like or, you know, what Manchuria looks like or Manchukuo if you want to use the Japanese term. So these are the four. I'll show you the other ten. I'll show you the whole unit and I'll show you some other guys that I've been working on. Um, I've been working on uh, my Winter Soviets. So I've been trying to do, I'm going to try and do these two sort of allied armies uh, in tandem and see if I can get them done by Christmas. So hold on, I'll show you the other guys. So these are the four guys you've been staring at for the last couple of minutes. Um, they're all finished, of course, as I just previously mentioned. Um, so I'm going to show you the rest of the gang here and I'm going to show you some of the backs as well. So I'm just going to rotate them around here to the next four guys. Um, as you can see, the figures are kind of, you know, static in the sense that uh, there's not a lot of poses. There's basically two body poses and there's two heads. And then there's the either a uh, bandolier or a blanket or a bag. So, you know, for cobblestone castings, they were really easy to paint. Um, they were really fun to do, of course. Um, here you can see um, the, the guy with the, the flaps down and he's got the bandolier, the one guy does, and the other guy has the blanket. So, um, but it's good. I mean, it, it makes a, a fair selection of troops. So these are the 14 man uh, free uh, inexperienced guys. Um, I've done them in the brown. I, I was thinking when I was doing them as well that a good reason to do it that way was that uh, the rumor about uh, there also being a North Korean book, or pardon me, a Korean War book coming out soon. I thought, well, these would be good. You could play them as Chinese or as, uh, you know, North Korean people's volunteers or something. So those are the Chinese. And then over here, these are the last, uh, some addition. These are the last five guys of the free 12-man Soviet Union uh, that uh, I'm doing for a winter army. So the idea for the winter army, as I've mentioned in a couple videos before, is I'm doing the, uh, like, December, November, December 1941 uh, outskirts of Moscow, possibly Leningrad. So I'm going for a, I know it's one of those things people are thinking you're crazy to do this, but you know, one of these, uh, you know, inexperienced armies where, you know, all your infantry guys are inexperienced. They're in giant groups. They only have rifles. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to do because for a thousand points, I figure I can get probably about a hundred models onto the table. Um, maybe not that many, but, uh, you know, close to, uh, mid to high 70s is what I'm hoping so that's what I've been painting that's what I've been doing since I got back um, so I'm, I've uh, tonight I'm gonna probably make up some more Soviet guys so um, I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you liked the tutorial like I said at the very beginning when I was talking over some of the photos um, it's more or less for a friend of mine back home who has uh, you know recently become interested in uh, painting tabletop figures uh, particularly a samurai so I wanted to show him how to do the uh, the uh, Eastern Asian uh, Oriental flesh. So anyway, guys, you guys take it easy. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Keep those brushes moving.
Bye-bye.